Time now for our memorable moment from the Rugby World Cup archive. This week, we look back to 2011 and the news the New Zealand public had been dreading. Dan, did you know straight away how serious it was? Um, I knew it was uh, it was going to be pretty serious just because of the uh, the pain after you know kicking a ball. It just felt like it, it popped and uh, hence going down to the ground in, in agony. Dan Carter's tournament is over, so Colin Slade playing in the number ten jersey, and he is charged with steering the All Black ship around the park this afternoon. Works it off again to Slade. He's got Williams there. And they defended extremely well. It looks like Colin Slade is down. The 10 jersey of poison chalice at the moment for the All Blacks. We've been white bone a fair bit because it's obviously had a fair bit of free time. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's when they tried to get a hold of me, really. We were going quite well that day, so it was a wee bit busy. So uh, it wasn't until Mills rang me up and, uh, and said that uh, Ted's trying to get you up to Auckland, uh, you might need to get in touch with him. Eden Park in Auckland, the time is here for the Rugby World Cup final of 2011. Now the All Blacks have a player down and it's Aaron Cruden. The reports, the reports coming back from the field, from the medicos were uh, yeah, get warm and get warm quickly sort of thing. Cometh the hour, well, cometh the man. Number four, 5'8 for the All Blacks. Pass the, pass the ball up. And it's on the French side penalty though. Now, who's going to do yeah. the goal kicking? That's the question. Stephen Interesting. Donald striding forward. At the time, it was, uh, it was very much just a, a kick kit with, you know, probably I think 25, maybe 30 to go that just had to go over. So, yeah, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't too much going for overhead, to be fair. Here's his kick. People thought they couldn't win it without Daniel. Well, they've proven everyone wrong. 